Why are hive minds always evil? They are in Star Trek, they are in Mass Effect, and they are in a new movie from the Nerdist called The Hive. It seems that the thought of losing our individual thoughts is uniquely scary to us, but nature is a scary place, and its hive minds are the swarms. In a new horror film that we here at Nerdist are releasing called The Hive, a group of camp teens are taken over by a mysterious virus that connects their minds and freaks us out and takes us over as one. To find real hive minds in the non-black goose spewing world, you have to look for the organisms that swarm. Though they don't have the benefit of telepathy or interconnected neural networks, starlings, honeybees, and locusts fit the bill. Let's start with a gorgeous swarm. A murmuration, mur, a murmurate, murmuration. Now you've probably seen the internet freak out about a video like this showing birds, in this case starlings, moving almost as one, and they pretty much do. When a bird on one edge of the flock senses a threat, for example, another bird on the other edge of the flock will move almost instantaneously, even though it hasn't seen anything. The secret to the swarm of modern dinosaurs comes down to fairly simple rules. As Italian physicist Andrea Cavagna discovered when he filmed thousands of them and then reconstructed their movements digitally. After crunching all the three-dimensional data, Cavagna found that the whole flock can move as one if each bird simply does what its six closest neighbors do without hitting any other birds. That way, if one bird moves, the entire flock moves with it. How about a swarm with a lot more legs. The honeybee swarm has something a bit closer to hive intelligence. Each spring, honeybees send out scouts to look for new locations for nests. They come back and they do a little wiggle dance routine, which is adorable, as, as you can see, and it tells the other scouts the direction and the distance of their new choice. This is where the hive mind comes in Literally, biologist Thomas Seeley watched these wiggles and he discovered that scouts were actually advocating for their choice of a new hive by headbutting other scouts who were advocating for a different location until they stopped dancing. As science writer Ed Young puts it, it's the B's version of a downvote. It's like B Reddit, for Reddit, buzz feed. Another insect hive mind isn't so democratic. It's cannibalistic, actually. The swarms you probably think of when you think of a swarm is a biblical amount of locusts. These things are like a roving natural disaster. Their swarms can span over hundreds of square miles, number in the billions in terms of individuals, and together they can eat over 192 million kilograms of plant matter every single day, every day. How can a swarm numbering in the billions move in any sort of coordinated fashion? Well, deadly retribution for those that don't fall in line. Just a few years ago, swarm researcher Ian Cousin discovered that cannibalism was key. By tracking marked individuals with a camera, Cousin discovered that at a certain density, randomly moving insects would start to form clusters. But at another higher density, he discovered that these insects would form an orderly march. It turned out that these orders were moving through the swarm in the form of bites to individuals' hind legs, or sometimes outright cannibalism if nearby individuals weren't doing what the rest of the swarm was doing. Cousin proved this too. If you snip the nerves in the hind legs that let them feel those bites, no swarm ever forms. Even humans can swarm. If one individual in a group started frantically walking off in one direction, for example, the whole group would probably follow suit like actual sheeple. It's not quite the Borg, but trying to resist nature's ability to make something more than the sum of its parts is futile. Why? Because science, there's bees! Everywhere there's bees! Want more science? Head back to Nerdist.com and check out my last video on how human combustion works. And if you have any comments or questions, you can hit me up on Twitter at SciFile. Thanks.